don't get me wrong. I love this series to bits and I'll definitely be watching season four, but I don't know why you guys defend this season to death as if it wasn't oversaturated with meetings like it even ended with two meetings in one episode so i'm gonna review this season so i can try to see what you guys see in it and if you have time check out my description there might be something fun for you to do down there anyway so how am i gonna review this season well i'm gonna create a narrative emotion questionnaire score narrative emotion is a concept that measures our engagement with fictional media narrative emotion can be split into two halves transportation and identification and this has been determined by multiple studies including one by yours truly i have taken this information and this knowledge and put it into a questionnaire and a scale essentially where i can make a score to determine subjectively how immersive any piece of media is i will be using that in this video now <laughs> so what score did i come up with well i gave it a six out of ten because it was boring especially compared to shows like vinland saga season two which i gave a nine out of ten yes i know that sounds controversial i will explain in a bit this six is made up of things like the inside world the outside world so they're in a circle in in jura tempest or the jura forest and the outside world and learning about the different countries and the, the different mountain people everything we learned a lot about a lot you know there's a lot of world building and a lot of inner world building in a sense we also got a lot of characters both good all of them had fine fine characterizations i think there was no issues with that as well what was the issues is the the conflicts the attention to detail the emotionally engaging aspects of it this season didn't grab much of my attention and it had bad pacing the meetings were the majority of the episodes let me put that into perspective because some people especially when i'm looking online don't actually really understand how many meetings there were so i did go back and i doubled checked i checked i even wrote every single episode which had meaning in it i will put that on screen right now to summarize 15 out of 24 episodes were full jam-packed with meetings if not one meeting that was running throughout the whole episode that means there was nine 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 meeting free episodes evidently compared to the most previous seasons which had meeting packed five to six episodes in the beginning and then the rest of it was pretty much just action just pacing just world building just on the ground work this was a catastrophically uninteresting season both visually and storytelling wise sure now the country has been built now that rimuru and the jura tempest federation all of that has been built there is a need for a significant increase in meetings compared to the beginning of the show that is very understandable that is a good explanation however they do not need to be presented in this way all these things that are happening do not need to be presented in this boring static sitting down let's talk way why can't we see the results of the meetings that we saw what happened to show not tell what happened to know what anime you are and not try to go outside of that i don't know in those nine meeting free episodes there were a ton of unfulfilling action sequences tensura has always had a lot of action maybe even 60 percent minimum i mean there are actually people fighting and practicing all the time i don't know if you remember but i do <laughs> there's also a lot of building up and stakes and a lot of light politics there's always been these things inside of tempura i mean <laughs> tensura not tempura by trying to delve deep Deeper into the politics and make that the focal point of the season it's actually inadvertently shown how shallow some of the world building and some of the villains really are not to mention that all of the actual good conflicts and all the actual good villainous acts are done mostly off screen or in some random short ass meeting and we never really get to see it we never really get to experience them and this is why i think the festival was the best part of the season and why hinata's fight was disappointing both things were things that tensura has done before you know a unique and nuanced way of uniting nations and species together in a pleasant manner and then a highly anticipated fight because the first fight they had was amazing so everybody is of course excited to see the development and how Rimuru will completely crush her now that's the expectation right but while the festival knew what it was and what it wanted to execute very clearly contrary to that Hinata's fight ended prematurely I guess in a desperate attempt to make us like her which I still don't really like her she's fine and also to leave her too buttered up as if she could have beaten Rimuru as if they were still on the same level 
after he became a demon lord. I don't really agree with the rhetoric and if really technically she is, I don't like it. One didn't compare to our expectations whereas the other did and that meant that not only did we not get a lot of action and stakes, but the action and stakes and all of that build up that we did get was disappointing. This alongside the fact that the interesting villainy was not really shown to us at all illustrates why this season was so lacklustre, especially compared to its earlier seasons. Now this is where Villain Saga comes in because I did see some people comparing it, you know? Comparing Tensura Season 3 to Villain Saga Season 2. I wouldn't say this is spoilers for Villain Saga Season 2, it's more so like watching a trailer. I'm gonna give you a little bit of it but not much at all. Skip it if you want. Now shows like Villain Saga Season 2, which dramatically toned down its action, could be used as an example of how to do this well. The only reason they did it well in the first place is because it's always been about challenging the notion of war. That's what the whole show was about. There was an obvious narrative decision to change the pacing and this, the, the way that this follow-up season was going to go in compared to the first season and the, because the characters in the world were already built up well enough they didn't have to spend any time establishing that they could focus on developing them into the ways that they wanted to develop they had a very clear path that they wanted to follow i'm sure that tensura is building to something right now some people have said the next season the next arc is amazing and i'm 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 excited for that promise i I mean, I don't know if it's gonna execute at this point, but I'll watch it because I really did love season one and season two. But compared to the agonizing journey of, I don't know, overcoming trauma when you're being forced to work on a farm and you weren't able to avenge your dad who died and the man who killed your dad, who you somewhat had a mentorship with and actually came to care about who died as well before you could do your duty of killing him. Compared to that, the 50th meeting about something with no real stake was boring i mean it was it, it, season three was boring b-o-r-i-n-g boring okay it was boring what do, what do you actually want from me what do you want from me because i can't i can't 15 out of 24 episodes i can't i can't i can't i genuinely don't understand why people so many people insist otherwise like i actually i don't understand because i'm not i'm not i'm giving it the benefit of the doubt you know i'm telling you there were good things about it but for the most part it was boring i'm sorry it's the truth. Point is, it was too different from the previous seasons for no real reason in comparison to Villain Saga. I mean, okay, I get it, in a sense. You know, I'm lying. I, in, I, I understand everyone has different interests. You know, everyone has different tolerances. I personally didn't think that the beginning of Steins Gate was actually all that boring, which should tell you how much patience I can have sometimes. But you can at least admit, right, that comparison to the previous seasons, it was boring, right? Because I know I'm not a shonen junkie exactly, but I also didn't come here for Slime Diaries. I came here for Tensura season three, and I don't think I got that. I don't think any of us got that. And that's fine to admit. You know, it's fine. It's like on AO3, nobody wants to leave a negative comment ever in their lives on criticism, you know, constructive criticism. You know, I, this is constructive in a sense. I'm, I'm saying these are the reasons why I just think it was, I just think it was fr frankly boring. I, I feel like there's no, no argument, but I just think strongly <laughs> that it should be considered as a boring season because whatever they try to do, I just think they fell dramatically. I, I think they fell dramatically. They could have added a bunch of villains. They could have added a bunch of conflicts. They could have literally made the whole money thing an actual problem you know something actually interesting to happen they could have made that big thing or they could have had an overarching issue the whole entire season even if it was superficial even if they were going to be destroyed within the same season and at least it would have some kind of level of oh i'm awake now you know even if they did missions to execute what they decided to do in meetings or uh, we saw different characters point of views just something that would have given it some sense of substance that would have been good you know how to see the see the world that Rumoru has built properly, see him outside in his own world that he's built, that would be great. But we didn't get that. In fact, I feel like we got to watch Slime without any of the good bits and I hated that. TLDR, Tensura season three was boring. It proved that it didn't know what anime it was and it shouldn't be compared to Villain Saga season two, which knew exactly what it was and knew exactly what path it wanted to go down, had direction, had something for us to grip onto. Whereas this just kind of left us in the air, 15 out of 24. I'm not gonna let you forget that. 15 episodes out of 24 were meeting episodes. And yep, I'll watch 
Tensura season 4, but only because people are saying it's gonna be good, not because this season was good. Best believe it wasn't because of this season. <laughs> and that's why I don't understand why people are defending it so much. If you wanna do one thing, subscribe, yeah. Otherwise, watch my videos and let me know what you think, whether you agree, why you agree, you should agree, because it, I mean, ugh, tell me if you really don't, but I mean, I, I'm kinda sick of reading people who don't agree with me, so don't know if I'm gonna read that comment, but <laughs> no, I'll, I'll just comment something, you know, something. I'll give it a look, I'll give it a look. If, if, I, think it's, if I think you made a good point, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I promise, okay? Anyways. I'm gonna say quick goodbye, Jan Yong, Jan Yong. Yeah, it was boring, okay? It was, it was boring. Week by week as well. I was watching it week by week. Many times I was like, what am I here for? Like, am I a waste man? What am I here for? <sighs> Isakai's. Am I right, guys? <laughs>